Hey guys, welcome. My name is Dr. Joanne Michelle Martin. I am a pelvic floor physical therapist that specializes in working with pregnant and postpartum women in addition to providing um, health and wellness consulting services. So welcome. Thank you for joining me. Um, I wanted to hop on Facebook live today and talk to you guys about pregnancy and your pelvic floor. Um, you know, there's so much that goes on when a woman is pregnant and, you know, we can't take for granted the involvement of the pelvic floor. And oftentimes, you know, women are given information or in a lot of cases not given information um, and don't really know what to do when things occur, um, especially after birth. Some of them are taken by surprise, um, you know, when certain ailments, um, well, not really ailments, but certain issues arise. And so I want to touch on those things today. Um, as always, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I will try to um, answer them um, as I see them, or um, at least to go ahead and um, try to answer them at the end of this, make sure all your questions are answered. Um, you know, so if I miss something, please remind me um, so that I could touch on that because I want to make sure that um, your questions are answered. All right, so just give me a second. Let me sync up all the tech here. All right. Good. All right, so um, just to start, you know, I'm going to show you, I've got my model here of my pelvis. This is a pelvis that's what it looks like from the top down view this is your bladder this is your uterus that is your rectum right there this is your spine this will be your ilium your iliac crest right here your pubic bones right here and right here and your sit bones this bone right here this bone right here um so when we talk about in your ischiums which are underneath underneath here going to the sit bone, your ischial tuberosity. And so when we talk about the pelvic floor, the pelvic floor is really the muscle unit, the, it's because it's more than one muscle, that's housed within this. This is your pelvis. And you see we've got organs, we've got bones. I mean, we've got ligaments, we've got joints. So I'm going to take the organs out. And now let's look at that top down view again. And you see it runs from, this is your tailbone right here in the back, and your pubic bone all the way in the front. So look at that, okay? That is your pelvic floor. And another view is right here. So you've got more than one layer, and this is your superficial layer. This would be your anus, this is the vagina, the urethra where you pee through is right here, um, and the clitoris just to give you some anatomical landmarks. And so, You've got a whole lot going on in this area. I mean, the, the muscles run like a sling, you know, going from your tailbone to your pubic bone. Hey, Naima. Um, and, and they offer a lot, you know, they support the organs that I just took out. <laughs> um, they help with continence. So they help with your ability to leak or not leak. Um, they help with sexual pleasure and, and just being able to appreciate um, sex um, orgasms. There are tons of nerve endings that are down here. Um, they help with stability and so help to stabilize your pelvis for movement of the trunk above or the legs below. And if you look here, this is your acetabulum. This is your hip joint. So most people kind of think of like part of the femur, just below the neck of the femur, something called the greater trochanter as the hip. Well, no, this is really the hip joint. And that's kind of in your groin, because again, your pubic bone is right here, your ischium and your sit bone is right here. It's right above your sit bone is where your, um, is where your hip joint is. And so it, the pelvic floor helps with stability. Um, it helps with anticipating movement, you know. Um, it, it plays a role um, naturally in breath, you know, as we breathe and your diaphragm moves, your pelvic floor moves as well. Um, and also helps with, because of the circulation, because of um, just the blood flow and, and, and the just the vessels that are there, it helps with lymphatic drainage too. So there's so much going on in your pelvic floor. Um, and so when we're pregnant, there's a lot of changes that happen too. Um, 
the biggest thing that I will tell most people, you know, everybody's heard about kegels. And they're like, yeah, I was told to do kegels. I was told to do kegels. So I'm just going to nip that one in the bud right now. Yes, we want our muscles to be strong. You know, we all want to be strong wherever. But muscles have multiple functions. Muscles have the ability to shorten or contract, which is where the concept of strength comes in. And they have the ability to lengthen um, or relax or um, in, still in an engaged state, they have the ability to control. Um, and so that's what we need the pelvic floor to be able to do. We need the pelvic floor to be able to shorten. We need the pelvic floor to be able to lengthen. So if I were to show you my bicep, I could walk around like this all day. Is that a good thing? No, because my arm's going to get tired and it probably will feel like it wants to fall off and it'll probably hurt after a while. And then everything else will start hurting and it's going to be a big old pain in the butt. Do we want it? No. Why would you walk around engaging your pelvic floor all day? Just saying. Like we don't, that's not what we want to do. What we need to do is make sure your pelvic floor can function efficiently. We want to make sure it's coordinated. And most importantly, when we're having a baby, we want to make sure that it can relax because when the pelvic floor relaxes, oh, losing part of my pelvis here. Okay, there we go. When the pelvic floor relaxes, these holes open, right? They open. When it tightens, those holes close. So bear with me for like two seconds. I want you guys to do an exercise, right? While you're sitting there, when you take your hands, I want you to feel for your butt bones, right? I'm going to do it with you. I want you to feel for your sit bones. And I want your sit bones to lie probably around here so that your fingers come just inside the sit bone, right? So bear with me. You with me? Okay. All right. Now I want you to sit up nice and tall. I want you to take a deep breath in. Belly big and hard, belly big and hard. Can you feel as though the tissues in that area are coming into your fingers? And I want you to breathe out and try to close your hole. Try to close your butthole. Breathe in, belly big and hard. Can you feel a change in the tissue? Can you feel the tissue lift off of your finger? And then like come back onto your finger. All right, now close your vaginal entry as you breathe out. Good. Belly big and hard. Try to close both of them as you breathe out. Good. So as you breathe in, those tissues lengthen. As you breathe out, they recoil. So definitely do not want to walk around doing kegels all day. They're important. There are variations of kegels. The biggest thing that we want to do is work on coordination of the pelvic floor. While we want those muscles to be strong, the vast majority, there are quite a lot of women who have pelvic floors that are gripped tightly and they have no sense or semblance of how to relax. They really don't, which is where we come in. This is where we work because what we want to do is optimize the pelvic floor muscle tissue, um, you know, optimize pelvic mobility. Like I said, you've got all these joints, you've got all the ligaments and all this other stuff going on here optimize the mobility because when this is not a flexible pelvis but this side of your pelvis should be able to rotate independently of this side of your pelvis when your baby is bo is being born you, the head of the baby engages this is the inlet this big ring right here and then it comes down through here so this part needs to be able to open the top of your sacrum right here moves backward to allow that baby to come in and then as it engages in here in the pelvic bowl then the opposite happens the bottom bones, so your ischiums, the sit bones, these two, they kind of come apart, okay? And now then your sacrum does the opposite. So the top of the sacrum now moves forward and the back of the sacrum comes back. So quick tidbit, did you know that outside of falls, falls being the number one reason for tailbone injuries, and your tailbone is also called your coccyx, that birth trauma is the number two reason for tailbone injuries? Got a lot of women walking around with achy butts. You know, their tailbones hurt. It's really uncomfortable. And, you know, and that's where we come in. Like I said, we really want to optimize pelvic mobility. And that way we can optimize, you know, the potential for a natural, vaginal, easier birth um, where you don't need 
external facilitation. So you don't need the epidural and you don't need the doctor and you don't need the episiotomy and you don't need all that other stuff that they tell you about. Let's save those for crunch time when it's like real, real bad, if necessary. Um, but again, we don't need those. So we talked about the kegels. We talked about all the stuff that goes on. So when we're pregnant, when we're, when we're talking about pregnancy and we're talking about um, the pelvic floor. There, there are four key things um, we want to talk about, probably five if we throw the breath in there, but there, there are four key things that we really need to talk about when we're going into labor and delivery. Like I said, pelvic mobility is key. We want the pelvic, the pelvis to move. The pelvis is a bony structure, but again, ligaments connect bones okay and so now we've got ligaments oftentimes during pregnancy because of the influence of hormones those ligaments will soften as they should to allow for increased mobility in the pelvis and when that occurs there may be a lack of stability okay we want to make sure that the muscles around are strong enough to help stabilize, but we want to make sure that you can move, which is another reason why exercise during pregnancy is so huge, okay? Movement is huge. All right, so we definitely want to do that. Um, pelvic floor uh, muscle therapy is super important um, as we go through the, the pregnancy as we go into delivery, like I just showed you, we need to be able to contract, we need to be able to relax, we need to be able to coordinate movements, we need to be able to coordinate with the breath. How many times have you heard people or have you watched a TV show where they're like push and the woman's like, because mm, she's holding her breath, right? Not cute, don't watch television people, it's not real. Um, that's not what we wanna do, because you're breath holding, you're increasing pressure in the abdomen, which increases pressure on the pelvic floor, which ultimately is going to cause more trauma. We don't wanna do that. We wanna do breathing. We wanna work on breathing. We wanna work on elongating those tissues. Um, we wanna work on breathing in, because again, like I said, when we breathe in, as we breathe in the pelvic floor, you know, it lengthens mm -hmm. and as it lengthens, the holes open. So your vagina opens and we want it to open because we want that baby to come out, right? Um, a Cochrane review showed that even women who didn't leak during pregnancy, so we're, we're getting um, to a few other points now, they showed reduction in leaking and incontinence in the first six months after childbirth with pelvic floor training. So we definitely want to do that. Um, and there are a few articles. If you are like me and you're big on research, I can definitely get those articles to you. It's very important. Um, and that goes into number two, being able to activate and relax your pelvic floor consciously, right? So we need the pelvis to move. We need the muscles to work. So we want to work on pushing technique. Any doulas and any midwives can tell you um, terminology may vary between the different birthing disciplines, but delayed pushing um, laboring down, there are lots of different names that people will refer to this as, um, is super crucial in preventing and minimizing pelvic floor trauma. Um, and studies have shown that when women just delay that pushing, when women are absolutely, Naima, I will send those to you, when women delay pushing, um, just kind of breathe that baby down. It results in less trauma and just an easier time in getting that baby out. Because the other thing that happens is we've got to think about what breathing does for you. You think about meditation, breathing. You think about yoga, breathing. You think about just breathing in general gives a semblance of relaxation. So it takes away stress. It takes away the stress hormones that are evident because when we're stressed out, we're going to do three things. We're going to fight, we're going to flight, or we're going to freeze, right? We can't fight when we're pregnant and in the middle of pushing a baby out. That's just not gonna happen. We can't flight because like I said, you're in the middle of pushing a baby out and moving and going anywhere is like the last thing you're gonna do. So option number three is we freeze, right? We freeze because of all this stuff that's going, it's more than just physical at that point, it's neuromotor, okay? And so we really, 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 want to work on not forcing the pushing, not breath holding, not and, and trying to do all that. 
even directed pushing when you're in labor and delivery room and a nurse is looking at you like push and you're like ah um because that's what the tv makes it look like um when that's happening it's not good for your pelvic floor it's too much stress so we really want to um decrease that again you know both research and anecdotal findings so just the comments and and you know just the reports of other people show that when you're breathing it lends itself to less anxiety and just a more relaxed experience so definitely um think about that the other reason why we want to work and we don't want to do this at the time of delivery we need to do this before we want to train you guys before you have this baby we want to talk about the breath so again coordinating that breath breathing in opens the pelvic floor breathing out shortens or closes the pelvic floor um so again you know we definitely want to talk about those things the third thing is perineal massage I usually will start my moms at about 35 to 36 weeks. And again, the research shows that if you engage in perineal massage, even if only for twice a week, from like the 35th or 36th week, then you have a decreased likelihood of tearing in the perineum. So let's get this pelvis back here. So this is the vagina, this is the anus, and this area right here is your perineum sometimes it happens less often now but it still happens doctors will perform what is called an episiotomy where they cut the tissue to make the opening bigger so as to help the baby coming out there is no research to say that that actually makes the baby come out any easier um, but perineal massage so if you would just start working the tissues here stretching that tissue um, and just acclimating that tissue to what it feels like with that crowning experience actually lends itself um, to decrease trauma on that tissue during the birthing process. The other, so, and we would want to do that prior to, um, prior to, to labor and delivery. The other reason why that's important is if you're tearing, so a few things, if you're tearing, if those tears are severe, they go and get my pelvis back. I should just keep it next to me. Those tears can go all the way down here into the anal sphincter. And if this is injured, women with, with injuries in through here um, are often, not often, they end up having um, anal incontinence, fecal incontinence. So urinary incontinence is one thing, but oasis injuries, so um, obstetric anal sphincter injuries, um, they end up having fecal incontinence. And it's not something that people talk about often. And we need to start normalizing these conversations because there are a lot of women out there suffering because they just didn't know. They just didn't know. Nor did they know that there was help for these things, okay? So it's super important, perineal massage, um, especially if you're a first-time mom. So if you're a first-time mom, 35, 36 weeks, you definitely wanna start doing some perineal massage to help with... Um, elongating that tissue at the perineum um, and, and prepping for birth. During your delivery, and again, all the doulas and midwives can attest to this, warm compresses, because you're gonna have that tissue start to relax with the application of a warm compress. And what you also do is you help with blood flow. You just blood circulating, tissue gets more relaxed, and it's been shown to decrease injury there. The other thing is, if you've got a tear, you know, tearing of the tissue can lead to, um, now it's got to heal, so there's increased likelihood of scar tissue. Well, if there's increased, if there's scar tissue in the area, that's going to make for pain because, I mean, again, you've got a ton of nerve endings in that area, so that's going to make for pain. And it's also going to make for issues um, like difficulty with sex and penetration, um, difficulty with defecation. Um, so there's a lot of different things you may just have because of the scar tissue, you may just have pain period in the area as a result. So we're trying to limit a lot of those things. Um, one of the other things that you want to avoid as much as possible is constipation. We don't talk about it oh, at all, at all. But you don't want to be constipated during your pregnancy because what do constipated people do when they go sit down on the toilet? They strain. Uh, 
and they strain and it's a lot of force and it's a lot of pressure not only in the abdomen but in the pelvic floor as well and if you're having all of that straining before pregnancy so just just go with me with this baby's growing baby sitting on the pelvic floor baby's getting bigger gaining weight muscles are stretching to accommodate that weight so if they're stretching they're not at their optimal position you are straining and applying more force and more pressure more straining a little bit of weakness you get in a lot of bearing down increased risk of prolapse okay we want to minimize your risk of trauma and injury to the pelvic floor we also want to minimize your risk of postpartum issues so we definitely constipation is one of those things that we definitely need to be on the lookout for as well so again we definitely want to um like i said perineal massage is key um if you're you know if you're a woman who's having issues with constipation increase fiber intake keeping the knees higher than the hips when you're going to use the bathroom maybe use a footstool squatty potty when you're on the commode no breath holding um, because again increased pressure on that pelvic floor um, and the goal is to keep your pelvic floor relaxed um, so that you know you're not you're not forcing it when you're going through delivery you want to have those muscles relax you want those muscles to just kind of open think opening like a flower right um we talked about the perineal massage um one of the things that i will tell moms is get acquainted with your lady bits okay get acquainted get a mirror take the mirror and just lay down and look just at least look if you're going to be doing perineal massage you're going to have to do more than look but look because you want to get acquainted you want to know I can't tell you the number of people that have no idea what is going on down there. None. Hey, Letitia, no idea what's going on down there. And so you want to look. It helps to be aware. It helps to, um, it helps when you're doing your perineal massage so that you know what's going on. Some people are visual learners too. It helps, right? So you definitely want to um, just see and, and also see what your pelvic floor is doing. So while you're in a semi-reclined position with a mirror, try to close, you know, try to close the openings. See what your pelvic floor does. What does it look like? It should look like the, the tissues are coming up and in. And now take a deep breath in and try to relax them. And it should look like they're relaxing and opening a little bit more. Okay. Hey, Miranda. And so, you know, you kind of want to kind of want to do that so that you can see. Hey, Alicia. All right. So again, we definitely, we talked about some of the things that are going to be super important when we are going through pregnancy. Pelvic floor muscle training is key. We definitely want to be able to not only engage the pelvic floor, but we also need to be able to relax the pelvic floor, especially in preparation for delivery. And we want to make sure that we can coordinate that movement, okay? We want to make sure that we're breathing. We understand the breath, that we know how to breathe. Here's the thing delivering a baby childbirth is like like the the penultimate like or the ultimate event right so think of yourself as a marathon runner you are running a marathon you are not gonna wait till the day before the marathon to get out there and run 26.2 miles now kudos to all y'all that run marathons because if nobody's chasing me there is no reason for me to run that far but if you want to make sure that you optimize your labor and delivery just practice all these things throughout your pregnancy just practice just practice. You know, like I said, you're not going to wait till the day before to practice for a marathon. You're going to be consistently doing things that are helpful um, throughout, whether it's nutrition, whether it's moving, strengthening activity, whether it's your pelvic floor exercises, whether it's getting your community and your village ready because you, you're going to need your village. Hear me on that when you're going to need your village, getting your doulas, your midwives, whoever have you um getting those ready and and then you know that transition you easier into delivery you want to optimize that delivery so again and you know perineal massage we talked about that making sure at 35 36 weeks you're doing it i usually will tell my moms do their perineal massage at least three to four times a week um you know for about 
anywhere from two to five minutes, you know. It, initially, you're probably not going to tolerate doing it that long, closer to two minutes. And then, you know, you can increase upwards probably to five minutes, probably about three, four times a week. Um, Alicia and Naima, um, what, um, how often do you tell your moms to do perineal massage? You can drop that in the comments and let me know because I know, you know, we've got some doulas on here and it's super important. Yes, Letitia, people people are ready to do all sorts of stuff. They drop the baby and they're, they're, they're ready to run. You got to heal, people. You got to heal. Um, so again, and like we talked about, you know, making sure that, you know, you're avoiding constipation when you're pregnant because that will lead to increased bearing down and will increase your likelihood of prolapse or it can increase your likelihood of prolapse so now you've had the baby okay the american college of obstetric and gynecology now recommends they just had recent guidelines that went up i believe it was november that you should be checked by a pro professional birthing professional within three weeks i usually tell my moms i want to see you within three weeks of you having that baby Okay, there is a lot. And when I tell you a lot, there is a lot that we can do education, movement wise, and so on, even at three weeks. Um, I also tell women, if you are having any issues, because there are a lot of different things that would warrant you having to be checked, um, having to be checked by a physical therapist, a pelvic floor physical therapist after us. Okay, yeah, Alicia says, um, three to four times a week. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty consistent. Three to four times a week for that perineal massage. Um, so ladies, if you have had an episiotomy, remember we talked about that earlier, where the doctors will go ahead and cut you to allow for, you know, increased opening. Um, not a necessity. That's something you want to speak to your doctors about when you are me. Here's the thing. You interview your doctors. You interview your birth professionals. You make sure that they are aligning with what you want in terms of when you go in to see your doctor. Hey, what is your cesarean section rate? How often, like, what is your, what is your um, protocol for if a mom goes beyond 40 weeks, you know? Because we want to give or take two weeks for the menstrual cycle everybody is not the same and you can safely go to 42 weeks without issue but there are a lot of physicians as soon as you hit 40 weeks they're trying to cut that baby out you want to talk to your um ob about that you want to talk to your ob about things like episiotomies you want to talk to your ob about things like fluids i worked in high risk labor and delivery in the hospital setting and i unfortunately had had a lot of women who ended up with fluid overload because there were doctors and healthy women, but there were doctors who were hanging bags, you know, and, and there are times when certain things are warranted, do not get me wrong. But again, it should not be a standard, especially when you've got an otherwise healthy mom who's doing great. You know, you can't just throw everybody on a bed and be like, all right, you just stay there with constant monitoring. Um, so these are things that you need to discuss with your physician. So if you've had a, an episiotomy, if you've had one of those grade three or grade four um, perineal tears, if you are having, you know, you've had that six week checkup and you're still having pain with sex, um, and there are women who at least 20% of women a year beyond giving birth are still having issues with intercourse. Um, Alicia is a doula and, and one that I highly recommend. And she says, yes, don't be afraid to look for a new provider. Doulas can help you find a good fit based on the options you wish. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Like we we know a lot of the physicians, you know, we, we work with them, we communicate with them. So definitely, I agree. Um, if you've had an instrument assisted birth, so you've, your doctors had to use vacuum or forceps, um, that increases your risk of perineal tearing and perineal trauma. If your labor was long, um, so we talked about a prolonged labor, second stage where you're pushing, you're just pushing for a long time, but also if it was stopped, so maybe the baby got stuck or something like that, we just had an arrest of labor or a pause in labor for whatever reason. If you had a cesarean, we wanna manage that scar early on um, and know that healing will take place in the first, in, within 10 to 14 days at that scar. In a, in a relatively normal and healthy individual, you're, that scar is probably already gonna be healed within at least three weeks. Um, if you've had any pelvic pain or any back pain during your pregnancy, so if you've had any of those issues, you want to see a pelvic floor physical therapist um, 
after you've had your after you've had your baby and pelvic floor physical therapist um you know in just about every state in the country we we can see you without you having to have a script from your physician um at least for a few weeks in some states or several visits in others um, and there are even some states where they don't need one so you can definitely reach out to a pelvic floor physical therapist if you have any questions or any concerns um, what about symphysis pubis dysfunction during pregnancy um, so that is where you are having some instability so this is your this is a, the pubic symphysis, that piece of cartilage right there. This is your left pubic bone. This is the right pubic bone. Um, and so what happens is as, your, um, as the joints start to relax because of everything that's going on, the hormonal influence and stuff like that, and sometimes because of the pressure of the baby, you can have just some separation here. Um, what you want to do is avoid anything that's causing, that's causing increased pain. Um, you want to avoid any any um, single leg activity or any activity where like you're in a staggered stance. A lot of women tend to stand with their weight shifted one way. You want to avoid those things because that tends to exacerbate that a little bit. The other thing that you want to do is you want to wear a brace. So oftentimes I recommend a Sorola um, belt for a lot of my moms with SPD, uh, which often tends to be very, very helpful. Um, it de also depends on the severity. Um, usually you expect some separation, probably up to about seven millimeters and normal is probably about around about four. Um, beyond that though, it tends to be a lot more painful and women can have significant pain to where they feel like almost they're collapsing. No, yeah, Don, great. Yeah, that's absolutely right. No lunges, um, no activity where you're, you're more or less using one side of your body. So if you're gonna be exercising, squats are fine. Um, or any activity where both your feet are grounded. You're not, you're not, your weight isn't shifted one side to the other because you really want to kind of keep your weight even and, and level when, when you do whatever, whether it's lifting or whatever the case may be. Um, yeah, absolutely. I can send you that. It's Sorola, S-E-R-O-L-A, but I'll, I'll message it to you. Um, and that's the belt that I typically will use for a lot of those moms. Um, oftentimes, and if you've had SPD, during pregnancy, mm -hmm. you definitely want to make sure, thanks Don. you definitely want to make sure that you're following up with a pelvic floor therapist afterwards because a lot of women, now the baby's gone. Um, and yeah, after pregnancy, you definitely want to follow up because it can still be very painful, can still be very uncomfortable. And really and truly what you want to do is strengthen the muscles around. You want to do a lot of global strengthening to help support the pelvis a lot better, um, which helps with that pain. And it helps with that discomfort, helps to stabilize that pelvis. So yeah, if you have any more questions about that too, you can definitely DM me um, and I'd be happy to answer those. So again, um, pelvic floor therapy with pregnancy is huge, is absolutely huge. There's a lot that we can do. We work hand in hand with your doulas, um, with your midwives, with your OBs during pregnancy, whether it's just to educate you and prepare you for delivery, or whether it's because you know, you're know you having certain issues, um, symphysis pubis dysfunction, you're having pain, your back pain, SI joint pain, hip pain, like whatever have you, um, nerve pain, because a lot of women will come in with injuries where they're having pain that may, ap may appear unrelated, um, but a lot of it can be because of the pressure of the baby. There is some pressure and maybe some compression of some of the um, lum lower lumbar nerves. And so you may start getting pain in the thighs and different parts of the hip as well. So that's, you know, just to be mindful of that. So if you guys have any questions at all, um, I'll hang on for a few more minutes, but please feel free. Hey, Kathy. Yes. Um, yeah, we, I mean, we, birth professionals all work together. And I tell you, I've met some of the most wonderful people and it's like a, a beautiful community where everybody is just trying so hard to do whatever is best for mom. I mean, the birthing community is super wonderful. I, I absolutely love all the ones that I've connected with. Um, very, very happy about them. So if you guys ever need recommendations for doulas or midwives, especially here in the Atlanta area, I, I do know some doulas um, and midwives outside of the state. 
But if you definitely need anybody in Georgia, please let me know. I will be more than happy to direct you guys to some of the awesome professionals that we have here in the Atlanta area because they're truly, truly wonderful. So if you guys have any more questions, please feel free to let me know. Um, you can always DM me. I'd be happy to answer your questions. Um, I also do um, virtual consulting. So if anybody's hearing this now or after the fact and wants to touch base, then please free, feel free. We can schedule a session. If you're here in Atlanta, just call me, get you scheduled, and we'll get you going, working on that pregnancy and just getting you healed and ready to deliver that baby and bouncing back afterwards. Thank you, Dawn. So thank you guys all for being here. Um, it's been my pleasure to host this. Um, let me know what other topics you guys want me to talk about. I'll be talking about um, fertility next week and optimizing fertility more from a nutrition standpoint. So let me know if there are other topics that you guys want me to touch on. I will be happy to do so for you. All right, guys. All right, so it's 4.05. And I shall bid you farewell. I'm happy too, Letitia. I'm happy. So, so happy. All right. Take care.